Well, God bless you. Welcome to the wonderful Words of Life radio program. We are going to be looking into covenant in this session. And we are going to see some things concerning the covenant that we have with Almighty God. Amen. Now, I was raised in a Christian home. My dad was an elder in the church. He was Sunday school superintendent. And I remember as way a little preschooler, I remember holding daddy's hand as he walked down the uh, Sunday school aisle of the annex. And he would open up each Sunday school class door and check on the teachers and make sure that they had everything. And uh, my dad was just one of those remarkable Christian men. Uh, He would uh, put me to bed every night. Uh, He would help me memorize the 23rd Psalm, and we'd pray the Lord's Prayer together. And then after that, he would whistle me to sleep. And I I tell you, I was so blessed to have a dad like that. Uh, And also with him being an elder in the church, we were in church every Sunday. That was part of our daily life. But now dad died when I was nine. And the following year, mom moved us down to Florida because she had family uh, in this state. And so we looked around and we got settled in in a home. Uh, Then mom began to look for a church and we found one not too far from where we live. And so as a young boy, uh, at the end of a Sunday morning service, uh, we went down to the front to make a commitment to Christ. But actually, as a young boy, I had no idea what that meant. I wasn't taught that. I wasn't schooled in that. So we just uh, we just went down to the front, and the pastor asked me if I believed Jesus was my Savior. I said yes, uh, but I really didn't know what I was saying. And so he handed me a, de- a decision card, and uh, the following Sunday night we were baptized and we joined the church. Well, <clears throat> I didn't know how to live a Christian life. I tried to live the kind of life that Mom said I should, and I failed miserably. And so I struggled with the Christian faith for several years. And then finally, as a teenager, I just gave up. I just failed miserably. I gave up uh, trying to uh, trying to live this Christian life. And so I dropped out of, out of church. And uh, so as the years went by, I, I graduated from high school, went to college. I also began to drink. I also began to smoke dope. And in the midst of all of this going on in my life, uh, the dregs of, uh, of sinfulness, mom came to me one day and told me that she had made a change in her life, that she had read a book written by a minister, and it so impacted her life, she recommitted and rededicated her life to the Lord. Well, that really did something to me. That impacted my life because by this time that I'm speaking of, Uh, My life was a vacuum. I I was really looking for some type of meaning because there was an emptiness in my life. I didn't know what it was. I tried to fill that vacuum up like so many sinners do with other things of this world, but they just didn't satisfy. And then right along that time, I met a young girl who was about my age. And uh, we begin we begin uh, dating on a struggular basis. Well, this young girl became my wife later on. And so she went to church. So I started going to church with her. Now, mom went back to church and she'd go to the Methodist church. So one Sunday I'd go to church with her. And the next Sunday I'd go to church with my good girlfriend. Well, there's one particular week that um, although I thought I was a good person, I thought I was good enough to get to heaven, but I began to, but I realized during this revival meeting that I went to my, in my girlfriend's church, I realized how wrong of a notion that was. And so one Wednesday night, I went to uh, my wife's church, my girlfriend's church, and I was high on dope, fully intended to make fun of the preacher because I'd heard him and listened to him that, that previous Sunday. And so and I, that's what I did. I began, you know, kind of laugh and snicker. But when uh, that, that preacher stopped singing and he started preaching the gospel, he opened up the Bible and began to preach. Uh, God got hold of my heart. And uh, and I realized for the first time in my 21 years of living, I realized 
for the first time that I had no hope without Jesus. I had zero hope to go to heaven one day. And so I wanted what the preacher said I could have. But I didn't understand how to have it. But when he made the invitation, opened up the altar for invitation, I went down to the front and I knelt and didn't have no idea. I had no idea what I was supposed to do. Uh, I had some men around me, but for some reason or other, they really didn't help me connect with what I needed to do. And so at the end of the service, I got up and I knew that I was not trained. I mean, I, I was not changed. Uh, somehow I knew that I needed, my life needed to be changed. I needed the life that that preacher talked about, and I wanted it, but I didn't know how to get it. And so I left service without an assurance that I was saved. And I remember walking out to my car, sitting in my car, and as I was just sitting there behind the steering wheel and I was watching people file out of the church, I just said it out loud, Lord, why didn't you save me? And as soon as I said that, I heard from behind me a voice that said, just believe, just believe. And when I heard that, I shot up both hands into the air. I looked up towards heaven and I said, Lord, I believe, I believe that Jesus is my Savior. As soon as I said that, God's presence came down and filled my heart. He came down upon me. And he came inside of me. I remember it was like a shot that uh, of the presence of God that hit me on top of the head, went down inside of me. That's how I know that man is a spirit. He's not just a soul and a body. He is a spirit, a soul and a body because God's presence went into the very center of my being where my heart is. Amen. Praise God. I had then, I had the assurance, I had the witness that I was born again. Now, I didn't know everything I know now, and I certainly didn't, didn't know enough about what happened to be able to explain it to somebody, but I knew. I knew I had the assurance that I was saved. I knew that God had granted to me the miracle of the new birth. Because one second, I was lost. I was lost in trespasses and sins. And the next second, I knew that I was a child of God. Now, if you wanted me to explain to you at that moment what happened, I couldn't do it. I didn't know it. Somebody asked me about a month later, do you know the Lord? I had absolutely no idea what that person was talking about. It took several years of applying the word of God, being taught in church, uh, reading the Bible for myself, before I began to understand that that experience is what the Bible calls the new birth, that I actually became a new creature in Christ Jesus, that I was a brand new person inside, how I used to be unworthy of God's mercy, but now through Christ, I had become worthy. I had been made the righteousness of God in Christ. I had been clothed with God's righteousness. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And I had that assurance. I knew it. Amen. I knew it. It happened uh, over 50 years ago, but I still remember as if it happened yesterday. Praise God. What an experience uh, to come to realize and to know Christ and to become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Well, without realizing it at the time, what happened to me is I entered into a covenant relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. That there were certain things in this covenant that changed. There was like a change of garments. Uh, those old filthy garments that I had on, those garments of, that were stained with sin, uh, God gave me a change of garments. I was clothed now with the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Praise God. That head, uh, the top of my head that had the, uh, the cloud of destruction over it was replaced by a brand new turban. That old dirty hat that I was wearing, that old dirty head that was thinking always about evil thoughts, doing evil, things like that, uh, all that began to change. God granted me a brand new being, a brand new mind that began to think along the lines. Now, it was still a baby. It was still an infant. But yet 
I began to think about the things of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, that reminds me of a passage in uh, the Old Testament in Zechariah about Joshua, the high priest. I want to read it to you. Uh, beginning in chapter three, verse one. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuked thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? That's what I felt like I was. I felt like I was a brand that was plucked out of the fire. Hallelujah. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I said, let them set a fair mitre or a turban upon his head, something that was clean. So they set a fair or a, a clean turban upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by and the angel said unto Joshua, thus saith the Lord of hosts, if you will walk in my ways and if you will keep my charge, then you shall also judge my house and you shall also keep my courts and I will give thee places to walk in among these that stand by. And see, these are covenant conditions that Zacharias prophesied over Joshua. Notice the change in garments. That happens when a person is born again. Those old filthy garments of the old man, amen, they're taken away and new garments of the new man are placed upon it. That old, dirty, uh, awful, evil turban is replaced by something brand new. It's called the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the conditions of the covenant, if you do these things. Essentially, Zechariah, the Lord, the angel is saying to Joshua, if you hear my word, if you obey my word, and if you do my word, then I will bless you. Amen. Praise God. And see, so when we are born again, we enter into a covenant relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And these involve many different things. And so <clears throat> entering into a covenant with God through Christ requires of us certain things that we have to do. Number one, we have to repent. And I remember when I was making my way down to the altar that night, I remember I was sorry about my life and I wanted my life to change. I did. I wanted what that preacher said that uh, God uh, wanted me to have. And I was willing to trust God. I got up out of that pew and walking down. <laughs> I was willing to trust God to change my life. Amen. I had faith towards God and I was willing to believe in him that he would change my life. That's what disappointed me when I got up from the altar and I knew there wasn't a change that confused me. You know, and that's why I asked to shout it out when I was in my car. I just said it out of my mouth. Lord, why didn't you save me? Because that preacher said that if I repented, that he would. But now there was one ingredient that I did not know that I needed to do. I needed to believe. That's what the angel said. Just believe. Just believe. And when I said, and I shot up my hands and I said, I believe. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Savior. When I said that, that's when I became a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I didn't know it at the moment that I'd entered into a relationship with God. All I knew was is that God did something miraculous in my life. I didn't know anything about adoption. I didn't find out about men and women like myself being adopted into the family of God until much later in my Christian experience. Hallelujah. And so we ask ourselves the question, what is covenant relationship? Let's define what covenant relationship is. Well, a covenant relationship is an agreement between two people that binds these two people or these two parties together. Each party now binds himself to fulfill certain covenants in order to enter into a relationship. Amen. 
And that's what we did. We entered into a relationship with God. We accepted God's conditions. And in return, because we did that, God granted us new life. Praise God. And so really, when we're talking about salvation and we're talking about redemption, we're talking about an agreement between two people, between God, who is the stronger by far, and us, who is the weaker. Praise God. And also, this agreement involves also promises, promises made to each. By faith, we promise that we're going to be followers of Christ. And because we repent and appeal to him, and let me tell you this, it, we don't draw ourselves to God. It's God that draws us to himself. So he's the great initiator. But now he promises if we'll have faith that he'll save us. And we promise that through salvation that we will follow him. So it's a covenant. The new covenant is a covenant. It's between God and between men. And this covenant, actually the word covenant itself is so important. It runs through the entire Bible, through the Old Testament and through the New Testament. Praise God. And God made covenant with Abraham. God promised to bless him and bless his descendants and to make them his special people. Abraham, in return, was to remain faithful to God and to serve him and to be a channel which God would work through him to bless the entire world. Amen. You know, God said this in Genesis 15. And Abram said, Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me you have given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. See, that is Abram on his part stipulating this covenant agreement. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if you be able to number them. And he said unto them, So shall thy seed be. Now listen, verse 6, And Abram believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. He began to trust in the word of God. He held God to be faithful and to be a God of his word. And so he believed in what God said. And God counted it to him for righteousness. In other words, he considered Abram now to be in right standing with him. They agreed on the same plane. But now this doesn't mean that the covenant was cut here. It's cut uh, much, much later. So we ask ourselves a question. What happens when we enter into a covenant relationship with the Lord? Well, number one, there's definite changes. I remember when I received Christ and the spirit of God came in me, I became a brand new person inside. There was definite changes in my life. There was changes in my mind. There were changes in my behavior. I wasn't made perfect. None of us are. Amen. But I was I became a work in progress. And so we enter into a blood covenant. This is a covenant made through the blood of Jesus Christ. We enter into a covenant with almighty God. And the nature of the covenant really it runs a, a pattern that is uh, similar to all kind of covenants. Amen. There's there's a name change. Uh, uh, there's one person he approaches another person that he wishes to cover a covenant with. You know, usually it's the weaker ap appealing to the stronger. And uh, that's exactly what happened to us when we came to Christ. Uh, there's an exchange of gifts. Amen. We we. Uh, we give God what we have, which is just ourselves. I mean, there's nothing that we can give God that he doesn't already possess, but we give him our heart. And in exchange, amen, he gives us his garments of righteousness and truth and holiness. Amen. And then we each other obligates. God obligates himself to us to answer our prayer, to supply our need. Amen. To be that help in time of need. 
And of course, we're obligated to obey and to serve him all the days of our life. And then normally with covenant relationships, there's an exchange of a cup of wine. And in that wine, there is blood that has been cut by the, in the wrist of the two parties. And that blood is dripped into that uh, wine glass and mingled and they drink it and they become blood brothers. They become the same. Amen. They become one another. Well, uh, we have had the blood applied to our heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And then finally, there's that the dirt is rubbed into the incision and makes a permanent mark. Well, God has set a permanent mark upon our life, upon our heart through the precious blood of Christ and through this new covenant that we've entered into. Amen. Praise God. Now, in Genesis chapter 17, I'm going to go ahead and read this to you. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to him and said to him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and you shall be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations, I have made thee. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee and their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every male child among you shall be circumcised. So now this is the prolongation of the covenant that God is making with Abraham. Hallelujah. And of course, if we went in, we may go into Genesis chapter 15 if we have time. And that's the actual cutting of the covenant. But see, that, that, that chapter 15 was not the finality of the covenant. This is the finality of the covenant. And one thing I can say about Abram, he started out as Abram. But he didn't wind up as Abram. He wound up as Abraham. And the man that started out on his journey in Genesis chapter 12 is not the same man that wound up in Genesis chapter 22. We have to understand that. And you, when you start out, you may be a brand new Christian. You may have been just a few days old. You may have been a born again Christian now for many years. Well, the very day you started out is not the day you are now. You're not the same. You've grown. You've matured. You've learned some things. God has shown you some things. You've learned how to to uh, open up your heart wider to receive uh, Christ and to become more submissive to him and more willing and obedient towards him. Hallelujah. So the very moment that we enter into a covenant relationship with God, we begin to notice change. I notice change immediately that day, that night I got saved again. Hallelujah. And uh, we realize also that I didn't realize it then, but I was changing. And I look back now in 50 plus years and yeah, oh yeah, definitely, definite change, definite change in my life. And the same is true uh, with you. Amen. Praise God. Now, Colossians says this. Now we're talking about change in the new covenant now. Notice what Colossians chapter two, verses nine through 15 says. For in him dwells all the fullness of the God head bodily and ye are complete in him. You know what that really means? That means and you too are filled with all the fullness of God, just like Jesus was filled with all the fullness of God through the new birth. Now you are also you and I also are filled with all the fullness of God and whom you also 
are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein you also are risen with him through faith in the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead, and you being dead in your trespasses and sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it, and has given to us peace, the peace that passes all understanding. This is the working of the new covenant that God did on the inside of us. Notice our identity begins to change. We take on a whole new identity. Transformation begins to take place in our mind. We begin to see things that we've never seen before. We begin to desire things that we've never desired before. That moment I stepped into that church on that Wednesday night, I thought I was having a high whole time. I thought I was a good person. Here I was high on weed, intending to make fun of the preacher. I was dead in trespasses and sins. I didn't realize that I had one foot in hell and the other one dragging in. I didn't understand that. But through the new birth, I began to abhor that which I did. I began to loathe that which I did. I began to shake my head and in, in, in credibility and thinking, how in the world could I be like that? Well, that's just following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air. But now he's not my God any longer. God the Father, he's my God. Jesus Christ is my Lord. The Holy Spirit is my helper, praise God. We've got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all at work to bring us to that place where the Bible calls the fullness of the stature of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Abram started out. Well, he started out a natural man, but he had faith. Faith enough through that vision, that visitation he had to do what God said do. That's where Abram's life began to change when he began to believe God. The very moment that you believe God for salvation, change begins to take place in your heart. But that's not where Abram ended. He wound up as Abraham. And God turned Abram into Abraham and made him a mighty force for God through his covenant relationship with him. And we have that same covenant relationship with him in the new covenant. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Our identity has changed the very moment that we're born again. Being born again, that's the first cause of transformation. God then begins to work in his and our life according to his will. And we give God praise and honor and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and for your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you were to die today, that you would be prepared for heaven? If you're not sure, then I encourage you to pray this prayer with me. Father God, I come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. I repent and ask you to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I surrender my heart and life to you. By faith, I believe I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for receiving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed this prayer and desire to know more about the gift of Christ that the Heavenly Father offers you, then email us at rbtc86 at gmail.com. We will be glad to answer your questions promptly and provide you at your request with materials that will help you to grow in your faith in the Lord Jesus. 
This is Patsy Dunning. Thank you for listening to our broadcast today. And let me remind you to tune in to this station at the same time next week to hear more of the wonderful words of life. God bless you and remember what Jesus said. It is the Spirit who gives life.